What up guys and welcome back to the Fitman Cook Kitchen. For today's quickie recipe, we have got one that reminds us all of childhood wonder. Do you remember the first time when you bit into a delicious hot, a piping hot slice of pizza? I still remember the day. In fact, one of my favorite memories of childhood and pizza was going to this place called CC's Pizza. And if you're in Texas, then you probably know what this is. It's, um, it's a pizza buffet and they had several different types and you can eat until you bust and then after you're full, you would go and play video games and then go back to the buffet and eat some more. It was just like the best thing and it was a treat to do on the Saturday. We can't live that life anymore. Pizza will catch up to us and it doesn't make us feel all that great. So today I'm gonna put a spin on a comfort food. This is a comfort food makeover recipe video. Today we're gonna be making some gluten-free pizza. Now, the star of this dish is not going to be cauliflower. The star of this dish is not going to be chicken crust. We've already done that. The star of today's crust is going to be almond. That's right, almond flour. So I'm gonna show you a quick and simple way to make an almond crusted, an almond flour crusted pizza. And this is actually, in my opinion, much easier to do than cauliflower. And it's also less work than the chicken crust pizza. Both are really great recipes, but I think this one is just fantastic. And I know that you're going to love it. The final thing that you should note with this recipe is just the toppings. Now, if you've never made this before, then I highly encourage you just to go ahead and follow it all the way through and use my recipe and my steps. That's because if this is your first time baking with almond flour, you need to know how it stands up to heat, how it stands up to moisture, and this will get your feet wet. When you just jump right in and start loading it up with a whole bunch of toppings and sauce, then it, you may not get that desired result. So just take it slow and ease into it. Plus, there is a lot of goodness when it comes to adding in some fresh ingredients, which if you've never done before, today is going to be our day to go and do that because simplicity is sometimes the best thing you can do for your diet and also for your taste buds. So if you are ready to roll up your sleeves for this amazing almond crust pizza recipe, then let's get started. But before we get started, of course, I've got a little bit of trivia slash some jokes for you today. Um, first off, how do you fix a broken pizza? You want to think about this one? I want you to actually, I wish there's a studio audience actually guest with some tomato paste. <laughs> Come on. How do you know that you're in love? Because they stole a pizza of your heart? <laughs> Why did the Parmesan break up with, with mozzarella? I'm way too mature for you. <laughs> What is a rapper's favorite pizza song? Slice, slice, baby. Boom, boom. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm say <laughs> That's not even a rap song. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Let's get on to the recipe. <laughs> okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our batter. So, to a large bowl, we're going to add in some almond flour. Now, I've got here some grated Parmesan. Also, shredded Parmesan works very well with this recipe. A little bit of onion powder, and then some dried oregano. Give this a good mix, and if you can, use your fork to mash out all those lumps. Now, those are the dry ingredients. Now, let's move on to the wet ingredients. I'm gonna beat some eggs together, along with a little bit of avocado oil, and some fresh garlic. And then add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and then mix everything together. Grab a spatula and just mix and fold and mash. It's not gonna mix together that easily super quickly, but it will get there. Once you get everything mixed together, form everything into a nice ball. And I like to let this rest in the fridge for about five, 10 minutes. And after about 10 minutes, we're going to spoon out our dough. We're going to first kind of flour our surface with some almond flour and add our dough to it. And you're gonna treat this the same way that you would some normal pizza dough. So we're just going to mash it. It's not gonna roll the exact same way and it may be a little wet and that's fine too. That's why you have the almond flour here on the surface to help out with this. And it also is gonna help to dry it out. We need this a little less wet. For this portion, if you are really carefully following your macros, I like to measure out how much I put in here and then go from there. So that way you know exactly how much you're putting into your body. And make sure that you're using 
almond flour and that almond meal. I know that they're, they're sold side by side in the grocery store, but there is a complete difference there. Totally different. You don't want to use the almond meal. Uh, grab a baking tray lined with some parchment, and we're going to make a square pizza. It's just the easiest thing. <laughs> so I'm going to break off half of our batter right down the middle. And it's okay if it's not perfectly shaped. But the truth about pizza is that nobody really ever cares about the shape as long as this pizza is actually good. Mashing it out some more and thinning it out some because you don't want some parts to be thicker than the others. You want this to be the most even cooking experience as possible. All right, once you've got your desired shape, we are going to bake this in the oven for about 15 minutes at 420. And what you're gonna be looking for is just to make sure the edges are just lightly crisping up, they're not gonna be burning, and that the center is actually cooking. Yes, and this is nice and toasty. You don't wanna overdo it because then it'll turn into crackers, which are also super delicious, by the way. Because of the nature of, of almond flour, I don't like to add too many wet ingredients, so what I've done is I've sliced up some, some tomato slices and dried them on a paper towel first, and then I'm gonna add in some cheese, very simple recipe, great for game day coming up. You know, the big game, Super Bowl Sunday, the Cowboys are killing the competition, so this would be a great one just to put out to have everyone to have a great time on Sunday. And yeah, I know you caught that, the Cowboys. I know we're killing it, 3-0. and 3-0, and baby! This is gonna be our year. Got cheese, now I'm gonna add some tomatoes. Hit it with a little bit of pepper on top. Let's put this back into the oven for about, I'd say five minutes. That's all it takes, we're just trying to melt the cheese and maybe get a nice sear on top of the tomatoes, that would be nice. All right, boom, beautiful. And finish it off with a little bit of fresh basil. You can chop it up, I like to just throw my leaves on top of it and just get right to cutting and slicing because fresh basil on pizza is the absolute best. All right, so I can't find the pizza slicer, but I do have a really sharp knife. So what I'm gonna do is just, oh, this is perfect. Look at this, look at this. Cool Kev, you killed it. You killed it, Cool Kev. It's beautiful, you see how it's nice and thin, and you still see, even though it looks, it looks pretty thin, you see this, and there's some give in it. And that's what you want. When you overcook it, it's gonna get super, super hard like a cracker. Let me show you what that looks like. It's gonna come out looking like this. It's still really beautiful and brown, but you can see there's no give in this. This is, these make really great chips and like a, like a nice like munchy snack, but not so much for pizza, unless you really like crispy pizza. All right, and now for the part that you know I live for. Jesse, I'm sorry, I'm gonna tell you right now in advance, bro, you may not get a bite of this one. You may not, it just depends on this first bite. I mean, this is smelling good, and remember the crust has, has cheese in it too. Yeah, you're not getting a bite. <laughs> this is super light. I would eat this entire thing with a nice salad. Mm. Okay, you can get one slice. <laughs> you get one slice, come on. You can get one. You can get, you can get a little bit of salt sprinkle from here on top. It's gonna share with you guys. I know, this, this is a quick one. Oh, this mm. one. Oh, this one's today. Go ahead, go ahead. You know what, you can go and get, you can grab that one right there. It has some basil in there. Salad? Yeah. Look at that. You know how eat cam? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> isn't, that make, isn't it just perfect? Mm -hmm. It's buttery, it's chewy, it's crunchy, it's savory. It, it's really there's good. no compare, it really is. Like the crust, I don't even know. It's almost like a like pastry level like. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's definitely it's pastry level. It's like it, it's um it's dense and chewy, but there's like a little bit of crunch to it. Just a, mm -hmm. a very 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 tender crunch to it. That's pretty good, right? That's yeah. that one. This one right Woo! here. That is it for today's video, guys. I hope that y'all really enjoyed it. I know you're gonna love this super easy simple recipe. I want you to comment below how you would customize it to your liking and what is your favorite fresh pizza topping. It's gotta be fresh. Gotta be fresh ingredients to put on top of this pizza. If you like videos like this, then I invite you to smash that like button below and remember to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring that bell so you can be notified every time we post hot new content here in the Fit Man Cook Kitchen. Until next time guys, I want y'all to keep it healthy, but of course, 
never ever boring. Ooh! Hi, y'all. Heck yeah. That was good. Yeah.